All right, you ready? All right, here we go. Welcome back to Torque and Power. Appreciate you guys. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, we'll do this again. <laughs> it's like immediately. All right, here we go. Welcome back to Torque and Power. I appreciate you guys checking in. It's been a while, it's been about a month since the last film. We got our, oh, we got ourselves a little buddy here. This is Rubicon, in case you guys are curious. This is the uh, Samoyed of the family, years old, but he wants to be on camera too. All right, sit, sit, buddy, sit, 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 good boy. All right, so again, welcome back to Torque and Power. Yeah, easy, easy, he wants to be on camera. He wants to be on camera. And uh, yeah, I got myself a, uh, a videographer now too, behind, so this is exciting times. There she is waving, I love it. Uh, today, what are we talking about? Let's get to the point. We are talking about Street Glide, Road Glide, Road King, whatever you have. The 22 models are just hitting the showroom floor. So I thought it would be a good time to make a video. If I had to buy this bike again, what are the top 10 things that I would do right away? So if I bought this bike before I even took delivery of it, I'd have it done before I go. To me, these are top 10 essentials. I and mean, that's where I cut it, and I'm going to continue on, okay. Alright, so today we're going to be talking about top 10 things that I think are essential. Clearly this is my opinion and from my years of riding and what I would do right away before jumping on the bike. Clearly there's so many extras that you can add to this bike before you even get going, right? So some of mine are don't cost anything, some of them are cheap, and some of them are expensive. But the best part about all this is you can do it yourself. That's the big key, that you can do all this stuff yourself. If you buy the bike, you buy the stuff, and then off you go. In. So, why don't we get to it? I would say number one, we'll start up front because I think that's probably the easiest way to go, and then we'll work our way to the back of the bike. So number one, first thing that I could not stand when I bought this bike, especially if you got one of the specials, it's either you're gonna get the chrome front end or you're gonna get the blacked out treatment. Why well, the blacked out treatment? And it's this guy right here, this axle nut, drives me crazy. I think this thing is just such a standout that I cannot stand looking at it. So what they make are these axle nut covers and I took it off so you guys can see it. It's just real simple, it's just a little set screw that you just put on right on over this guy and then you just tighten up the set screw and then it's in place and just like that you got a nice clean look. Otherwise, I mean come on, this is freaking hideous. I cannot stand the way this looks. I wish Harley would include it. I know they do on the CBOs but for the rest of us, no. So, axle nut, that's number one. Number two, which you don't even see on the bike, and I'll make sure I post it at the top so you guys can see like a little before and after, is the fork reflector. This fork reflector is hideous. It sits on here, I know it's a safety thing, I know they have to put them on, but there's not one Harley that we have here that has that fork reflector. I think it is so ugly. It's so simple to take off. There's two methods that I've heard of. Um, you can take a heat gun to it. That's what I did. It was super, super easy. Hold the heat gun on it. It just takes off the adhesive on it. The guy peels right on off. Um, another one I've seen too where people take fish line and they put it behind the reflector and then they kind of walk it on down and try to get it off. Um, I wasn't a fan of that because now you're putting that on the paint. Um, and heat guns are like 10 bucks. Go to Harbor Freight, go get yourself a heat gun and uh, you could take that guy off in no time at all. So, number two, right? Clearly cosmetic things, but to me that's a must. All right, so we actually finished the video, but I forgot to add this one little thing in, so that's why we're doing a little cut play. So we talked about removing the reflector and I want this to be part of it, so include this as uh, number two. Removing the reflector, and another thing you need to get rid of is this freaking antenna comes out the back. So this guy is huge. So where it sits is right back here, typically. Um, this is a CBO rear fender, like I said before, so it doesn't have the cutout. But typically it sits like in here for this thing. And this thing, I can't tell you how many times in the garage when I bought this thing initially in the beginning, that it just kept <coughs> hit me in the face constantly and it drove me nuts. So whether you get yourself a shorty antenna, um, that might work for you if you like that. It makes it a little bit smaller. Um, I had the hidden antenna before underneath the fairing, um, but then I got to the point where I don't use the antenna for anything. Everything I use is off my music or whatever else it may be, so I don't even use it. So I just pulled it all the way out 
even the wiring that comes from the antenna to the rear seat, and then from the fairing all the way back to the rear seat as well, there's another wire. I just pulled all the antenna out because I just don't even use it. But I just can't stand this thing. So make sure you guys get changed. This thing, I'm telling you, will crack you in the face. Huh? Even at the dealers, I walk by new bikes and it still cracks me in the face. So uh, this one was included with number two. So we just wanted to put a little annex on that one. Number three now, this is kind of everything when included, is going to be these LEDs. So whether it's the headlights that you got up front or you got the blinkers, here on the side, and then you also got these guys in back. You got the LEDs back here. Now I got the CVO rear, but if you just got yourself a regular road glide or street glide, you would just change out those guys. And again, it's a real easy cost, simple plug and play to put those guys in, and you're off and running. And the light that you're gonna get out of that is amazing, especially if you guys go with the ones where they're also a daytime running light up front for the blinkers. It's like having now, passing lights along with that headlight. So it's always good to be seen. Like I said, it's real simple, plug and play, pop off the lens, take out the bulb, put in the LEDs. These are custom dynamics, which I love. They don't sponsor me. Maybe they will, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, custom dynamics. So that is awesome. That is definitely a must too. Now this one is kind of up in the air. Um, if you're a music person, I know some people listen to no music at all. They don't care about music. Me, myself, it's tough for me to live without music. Even filming this video right now, I want music on in the background, but it is hard for me to do it without music, and I love music. So we're gonna talk about maybe going the budget way to change it, right? And I know a lot of people don't like the boom stuff that comes from Harley, and now they got the, um, the, uh, the Rockford Fosgate speakers and stuff that come on it. Um, but when I bought this bike, the Special, it already came with the Stage 1 speakers. So having those stage one speakers, a real easy, cheap thing is just to add an amp. And it's real simple to do if you guys haven't ever done it. It's just a boom amp. You can go get one off of eBay for cheap because everybody wants to get rid of the boom amps because uh, they want to upgrade their stereo systems or whatever. And everyone wants to get rid of those because they want more wattage, all that stuff. So you can go get a boom amp real cheap. So to give you guys, a, for instance, these speakers, which like I said, are the stage ones from the factory, the amp is this infotainment system that it's plugged into. And once you take off the bolts, really easy to pull out this outer fairing. Underneath, you unplug it, and it's real simple. You drop the amp in, it's got a whole tray for it, and it turns these 25 watt speakers into 75 watt speakers. So I don't know how you do a better deal than tripling the wattage on something like that when you can just plug and play an amp and, you, and then you're good to go. Um, it wasn't enough for me. I want to add more speakers, so I added more in the lowers too, but you don't have to go that route. But if, again, if I was going to do this and I bought the bike, right off the bat, by the right off the bat. <laughs> how, many drink, how many Have a sip. Whatever you're doing, that. Yeah. Have a sip. Whatever you're stuttering, then you have a little sip. I hope you guys like cider, because I do. So anyways, right off the bat, you get a lot of bang for your buck. That's what I was aiming for, word-wise. So, Think about that. Um, next, this one, I would say out of everything, is the most challenging. And this one was probably one of the last things that I did on the bike, and that was these handlebars. Now, you can do them yourself. These guys are Factory 47, if you guys are curious on these bars. Factory 47, if you are going to put them on yourself, Factory 47 themselves, and I'll do a little link, um, does a great instructional video of how to put these bars on. And I did them myself, it wasn't hard. I internally wired them, I put the heated grips on, all that stuff. But to me, the bars are big because now it customizes the bike to fit you. You can bring them towards you, you can bring them back, if you want to put risers on, whatever it may be, but it customizes the bike for you. And I wish I did it right off the bat because that's how much it changed it. It's a touring bike, I wanted to go touring on it, so you want to be comfortable. And to me, this is a no-brainer accessory that you should do. It's just, it's just going to be easier for you to put miles on the bike. Right, and that's hopefully why you bought the bike, is go out there and tour and put miles on. All I keep seeing is oh, <laughs> cold coming out. We're in Illinois, so if you guys don't know, your news is channel, Illinois, it's, it's cold. It's 20 so degrees today, it's so it's, 20, but it's hot today. 20 degrees, but yeah, so handlebars. So that's number five when it comes to this. Number six, we're gonna go straight on down, because again, it's a touring bike, and highway pegs. Highway pegs, I would think it's a definite must. Again, to me, this is big for comfort, 
Um, kicking your legs out, getting them to stretch, nothing allows you again to put on more mileage than actually having these highway pegs. And these are the adjustable ones. Um, as you can tell, they're long, they go around the fairing. Uh, depending upon what your height is, you can get them even longer or you can get them shorter. I've had the shorter ones before, they work just fine. When you don't need them, this is a little tip. If you guys are new to motorcycles, whenever you go to park your bike, you're at a rally, you're at an event or whatever, make sure you're done with your ride, you turn these guys up before you go park. I have seen people before, they go to park and they have these things down and they clip the bike next. And you guys know this paint is expensive. So make sure you guys pull these guys up. That's a big thing. So And you can do it with your feet too. You can you, do it while you're riding too. So you, if you don't want them um, you up got, them. See, great tip from behind the camera. Yes. You yes, can yes. do it while you're riding too. So again, easy to install. Like I said, everything is you can do yourself. So far just the bars are the ones that's gonna be the most time consuming, but you can do it. Um, so highway packs. Alright, so I mentioned this one, the next one, number seven for me, because the 22s, and I think they started in 19 I would say they started to eliminate it, but they start to eliminate the heel shifter uh, Harley came out and said not many people use the heel shifter So they pulled it out. I Don't know how much I buy that because everyone who I know and I ride with loves the heel shifter or adds the heel shifter um, So if that was a cost-saving measure it would be a little bit more what I would think But if you don't have one it is so simple again. It's just one simple bolt they give you the kit so you get the longer shaft that comes out. Yes, I said shaft. Longer shaft is always longer, good. Longer shaft is always good. And uh, yeah, okay. So anyway, so it comes <laughs> out and then this guy just goes on and then you can set up where you like it. So you guys know this comes off and it's got little increments. Depending upon where your foot is, you can change it. Um, if you like this guy higher or lower and same thing with the heel shifter, you can change it. But to me, this makes shifting so much easier and uh, definitely a must. So if I had to buy a new bike and didn't have it on, bam, that puppy is going on. I'm definitely putting that thing on. So heel shifter. I agree, by the way. Agree. Oh, there you go. From me, I can't agree. Another concurring. Another thing now that this is a touring bike. What else are you going to have to put on? I would put on the docking hardware. This docking hardware is so valuable because it's so versatile. The docking hardware, this guy's just got little uh, caps that go over to make it look pretty. Just magnetic clamps, they go over. Uh, but whether you're putting on a backrest, right, which would go on the front one to the shock mount, you're putting on a luggage, a touring, a, a rack on the back, whatever it is, backrest, you're gonna need it. I mean, you might as well just be truthful yourself. Uh, hopefully, you're eventually gonna attach stuff to this and you're gonna take this bike touring. To put bags on it, you're going to need a backrest to attach to it. So get the docking hardware. It's all four point. They don't make the two point now for a long time. It's all four point docking hardware. And to me, it looks great. It looks seamless with the bike. So docking hardware because you're going to go out touring because it's a touring bike. So make sure you go out <laughs> and use this thing, right? Um, and your passenger will love you too because then you have the backrest. You'll have to hold on to it. Uh, docking hardware. Okay, so now you're like, what the heck? He's been doing all this stuff. And he hasn't got to the most important thing of what makes a Harley, right? And of course, I saved it for last. So, with everyone, I think this has got to be like the number one addition to this bike. And it's going to be the exhaust system. So, if you're going to buy this bike, number one thing I would do right off the bat that most people do is I would put slip-ons. Uh, this is a full exhaust, but if I was just going that route, I would do slip-ons. Uh, put those on. That's probably a little bit more on the costly end of the stuff that I've talked about. The bars and the slip-ons would be probably towards the more expensive, but slip-ons are really easy to do. Pop the bags off, take off the clamps, put on the new ones. Boom, you got yourself a lot of rumble. And that's what Harleys are known for, right? That noise. And now I'm not going to dare project what I think you guys should use for slip-ons. There's so much taste. You want loud, you want quiet, how you want it to look. Um, but slip-ons, that's definite. So now if you're going to be doing the slip-ons, I kind of count this all together is number nine would be the air filter up front because if you're going to be doing that back there the exhaust do the air filter up front and this one it still looks like the stock i know you guys think it does but it's actually the performance wedge one so it's all exposed the element underneath for a little bit more power um, you do feel a little bit more power you certainly hear a little bit more of the suction from the throttle body again a super easy change it's just a few bolts, change the back plate, change the intake cover, 
and you're good to go. Make sure you guys follow the directions on this guy because there's a, a little uh, zip tie that you got to make sure you take off and remove. Otherwise, it's not going to fit flush if you guys do the stage one. If you guys haven't seen it, I'll do a link to it too. I did a whole video on uh, stage one on this bike, so it'll give you a little bit more insight on that. But to me, that's number nine. Got to do intake, got to do exhaust. And number 10, because uh, a lot of people I choose to think choose not to do it, I would, and that would be the tuner. Uh, this is a Harley tuner that I got with this bike, uh, and it's just a Screaming Eagle version. I think it's so vastly important that you get the bike tuned right. Um, and this one's a real simple one, right? So you're, you're going to probably do modifications down the road. Do yourself a favor, get the tuner, get it done right. Screaming Eagle is probably the easiest. It's so plug and play. You go on Harley's website, download what you got, send it to the bike, it sets it, and you're good to go. Um, but if you know you're going to do more stuff down the road, I'll walk you guys over to the V-Rod. Um, I would do the Power Vision. So the V-Rod's got the Power Vision on this tuner. I would do this one. If you're going to do more modifications down the road, I know the tuners love it. There's just more options that you can do with this guy. Right? It's got a nice screen and everything else. I know the tuners love it. So if you are going to do stuff down the road, uh, like I will on that bike, I'll be doing the 128 here soon. After I get this done, this video get out, we can start to do um, the 128 kit on this. But do the power vision. So I hope that helps. You guys have any questions, I'll list like all the part numbers in the description of what I talked about. So if you guys are curious what to do and what to get, um, that would be my top 10. And my cameraman concurs. Camera, camera woman. woman. Camera Hello. woman. We concurs that that would be the top 10. So if you're buying, you just bought a new bike, a new 22, and you're thinking about what to do, there you go, there's your list, top 10. Appreciate you guys checking in the Torque and Power. Uh, stay tuned, because we're going to be starting with the 128 uh, build next, and that's going to be fun. All right, thanks guys. Mm -hmm.